In this video, I shall show you how to use CAP 697, figure 3.1 for climb, to obtain fuel time and distance to climb for our multi-engine piston aeroplane, or MEP1. Figure 3.1 climb for the multi-engine piston aeroplane looks very similar to the fuel time and distance to climb chart that we had for the single engine airplane or SEP-1. However, there are some minor differences. Again, just like for the single engine airplane, we have a work example with some guidelines pointing you to the right technique to obtain these values. However, for this example, we shall be using different figures to show you how it's done and you can always come back and see if you can follow through the work examples as well so you have a little bit more practice and you can check whether your answers match the solutions for the work example. Let's demonstrate this by working an example. In our example, we shall climb from an aerodrome at 6,000 feet where the outside air temperature is 22 degrees Celsius all the way up to 13,000 feet, where the outside temperature will be 10 degrees Celsius. And just like obtaining fuel time and distance to climb for the single engine aeroplane, we shall determine the fuel time and distance to climb from 6,000 feet to 13,000 feet by assuming that both climbs will be done from sea level to 6,000 and sea level to 13,000 and finding the difference between the two, since the performance for both aircraft would be the same from sea level to 6,000 feet. If we subtract that, then we get the remainder of the fuel time and distance from 6,000 feet to 13,000 feet. That should make logical sense. But let's work on the example so you can see how it's done. And I shall start from cruise altitude and work my way down to the departure airport. So I'll first plot my line from 10 degrees positive at 13,000 feet, and 13,000 feet falls somewhere between 12,000 and 14,000 feet. So I'd have to interpolate between these two values and see where that line would intersect 10 degrees Celsius. Let's do that now. And it should look something like this. You can see that I've put a mark at 13,000 feet, where I've interpolated between these two values, 12,000 and 14,000. I've drawn a little dash to show you where that should be. And now I'm going to draw a line across the chart to meet fuel, time, and distance to climb. and it should look something like this. So this is the second step, and the final step would be to draw a line straight down from fuel, time, and distance to the scale at the bottom of the chart. And that should look something like this. You have to be quite careful to read the scales. Um, I've drawn the lines a little bit thick so it shows up better on the camera, but ideally you would use a mechanical pencil and write in the units at the bottom or note it down on a piece of paper so that you don't forget what you've read off the scale. And what we have here is fuel being 10, 12, not exactly 13, so maybe 12 and a half gallons. Time in minutes, 22, 24, not exactly 23, so maybe 22 and a half minutes. And distance of not exactly 42, so about 41 minutes. So this would be the fuel time and distance that our multi-engine piston aeroplane would take to climb from sea level to 13,000 feet, where the outside air temperature is 10 degrees. So 10 degrees and 13,000 feet. These are the corresponding values for fuel, time, and distance. Now, we're going to do exactly the same thing for a climb from sea level to 6,000 feet where the temperature will be positive 22 degrees Celsius. 
and I'll just speed up the video so you don't have to watch me draw five lines again. And that should look something like this. And if we read the scale carefully, we would have about five and a half gallons, 10.1 minutes, and 17 and a half nautical miles. So what's left to do now is to subtract the smaller values from the larger values. Or we would subtract the blue lines from the red lines. Remember that everything under 6,000 feet would be common to the same aircraft if it were to climb from sea level to 6,000 or if the same aircraft were to climb from sea level to 13,000 feet. So 6,000 and below, we're going to subtract that and that gives us the difference or the climb from 6,000 feet to 13,000 feet, which is what the airplane will be doing, departing from 6,000, climbing to 13,000. So let's take 12.5 minus 5.5 gallons, 22 and a half minutes minus 10.1 minutes and 41 nautical miles minus 17.5 nautical miles and that would give us our fuel time and distance to climb of 7 gallons 12.4 minutes and 23 and a half nautical miles and that's how we use figure 3.4 climb to obtain fuel, time, and distance to climb.